Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. Just going to go through the weekly index look. Um, I have all uh, sent out the levels, or we'll send the levels out to Paul that we've got on the indexes. I will say uh, expected move-wise last week, uh, YM and ES tested the expected move to the low side but held within. The NQ, however, did close below the expected move, so the NQ was uh, a bit weaker last week. Uh, start out with the IWM as we usually do. Uh, daily chart on the right and weekly chart on the left. I've drawn in a couple of levels that I'm going to talk through here a little bit, but we did talk about weakness in IWM last week. And looking at the close that we had on Friday, looking for continuation to the downside, we did get it. We've already hit a fifth wave target uh, on the daily chart. Um, we closed last week, I think this was the candle here, and we closed near the lows, and we talked about continuation to the downside given the close at the end of the week uh, near, the, near the lows. We did not only get a uh, downside extension, a little bit of a bounce, we had an even lower close, and a, on a weekly chart, of course, we had a <clears throat> lower weekly close, or lower extension to the weekly uh, downside. I've done a little bit of work here <clears throat> looking at some support zones because uh, things look continued uh, very weak to me at this point. I'm trying to figure out where some of the support zones might be and I think the next one coming up is going to be down to about 142.25. And I say that because this was a breakout area. So if you look at this uh, box I've got here, this is a fifth wave target that's violet, but this blue box was a long several uh, many week consolidation zone and then we finally had the breakout out of that zone back tested down to this 142.25 which was prior resistance we came back and tested it acted as support and then of course we got the punch through into December lows here um, you know going through that level but I think it may end up being another tested uh, a testing zone for support uh, the more local ones are going to be this wave, uh, the A pivot low from the ABC correction after the prior wave 5. We had an IWM on the weekly, <clears throat> but uh, all this area to me looks like we're looking to try to test lower. Uh, on the daily chart, we have had this 148.39 level, which is you know the prior low we had that set the wave 4 on the daily pivot and you know we did a successful test of it we did find some support and we did have a more bullish close on Friday's price action near the highs uh, maybe IWM may work its way out of this um, it's a little gap here maybe we're gonna fill the gap maybe we'll get up above this 15367 but everything right now from momentum I'll show the momentum chart here um, you can see again on the monthly chart. <clears throat> uh, let me get on to IWM. Come on. All right, the monthly chart, it's starting to hook over. That's really never a good sign when you've worked off this oversold condition back to the zero line. It hits the zero line and starts rolling over again. Uh, the monthly price action obviously is very weak. Uh, going into the close of May, we, we may end up getting a uh, <coughs> monthly close down near the lows, maybe even broke the, break the low we've already had. Uh, as I said, the weekly looks low. So from a momentum perspective, the RSI has rolled over on the monthly. Uh, the MACD has rolled over on the weekly. We had, you know, uh, we've now crossed down below the zero line, which means the Shorter term moving average, the three period weekly has moved below the 10 period weekly, bearish. Uh, we're getting still lower extension on the weekly chart and IWM and on the daily chart. Uh, I uh, Let me maximize that. I'll just zoom in on that a little bit. On the uh, daily chart, I have started to draw a downtrend channel here and we're looking to continue perhaps to break this uh, prior pivot for low 
and as you can see this is starting to print a wave one a wave two we've already broken the wave one pivot <clears throat> if this comes back up it's going to turn into an ABC correction uh, but it's going to get back up I think above the two pivot for this to turn to an ABC and start heading back upwards again uh, none of the momentum indicators really indicate that uh, that's likely going to happen. We've got the MACD rolling over in the daily. RSI did have a little bit of a bounce. We did have a stronger close on the daily, as I talked about here a second ago. Um, but the other indexes are really not that supportive of continued bullish price action. You know, the all the China tariff news and economic indicators and Brexit and all these other uh, risks seem to be pushing indexes towards their uh, lower lows and that's what we're seeing here the the bonds have been still somewhat bid we do still have inversion of the three month and ten year um, yield curves and as we start getting uh, you know maybe weaker into the two year ten year inversion which is a little bit more of a bearish signal I think uh, we'll get a little bit more press than the second wave of the three month ten year um, we'll see what happens but bonds have been somewhat bid over the week and uh, bonds going up is a risk off situation for the indexes okay that's IWM so look for continued weakness in IWM it is below all the moving averages by the way the 200 the 89 SMA and the 55 as we if we start coming back up we're going to find resistance you know through all those in the cloud there's a lot of overhead uh, resistance to be thinking about in IWM as the growth index and the Q's yeah, let me minimize that and yeah, let me get my Q Elliott wave chart back over here same thing, the Q's is, you know, I've drawn a downtrend channel. The close was much weaker for the Q's than the IWM on Friday. You know, going into a three day weekend, so the volume was not uh, spectacular. Um, not clear yet what to read into this on the weekly chart. We are, you know, we did close in the cloud on the weekly, uh, but we haven't yet punched through it, and the weekly cloud is still, you know, headed up trend. So until we start breaking down below this wave four pivot and head down lower towards this 169.17 area <clears throat> which was a prior support zone uh, that we had in the uh, triple Q's or this area here let me draw it it's on a daily chart draw another support level we have at this pivot here that we're pretty close to 176.60 so that's a couple of points away from that uh, we're probably headed down to retest that which is also the prior support we had in wave four it's been tested a few times if we punch through it we're probably going to head down to 169.17 area and look for a test of that prior support in that zone <coughs> on the weekly as I said we're in the cloud if we break through the cloud we'll be look, look for a retest and either get back through it or head down below it. If I look on my momentum uh, chart here, we talked about the Qs on the monthly starting to kind of curl and flatten out. The RSI is headed down. Um, you know, the momentum on the weekly is clearly bearish. The momentum uh, of RSI is bearish, and on the daily, you can see that the daily chart is uh, RSI is rolled back over. MACD came back to the zero line, worked off that oversold condition in a pretty negative way. We really didn't get a lot of upward price action. And now we're rolling over again, as you can see in the multiple time frame cloud. Uh, the monthly is the bottom chart, and then the weekly, you know, we're in the weekly cloud here that closes on the weekly for the triple Qs. And we're starting to work our way into the cloud uh, area. We're still above the 200 SMA and the 89 the 55 uh, we're, we're now below it and you know we could start heading down as I said towards these other support levels but the cues are looking weak the close on the weekly was uh, towards the low side um, you know we did get more downside extension and the cues look uh, continued to be weak so my view on the cues is bearish 
the SPY was a little bit more mixed. If I look on the weekly, we actually had an inside week on the weekly chart here. You can see that we did not get a more downside extension on the weekly and we didn't break the high. So we've got a little bit more uh, triangular consolidation here in the SPY. I'm going to look at, uh, shove over to my Elliott Wave chart here. Slide that over. You know, as we talked about before, we did hit the fifth wave target. We're in a bit of a pullback. We're hitting the cloud. Did not close inside the cloud. We tested it and got out of it again. Uh, the daily close on the SPY, however, was a bit on the weak side. Again, it was Friday. The volume wasn't spectacular uh, before three-day weekend. Um, but we are, again, testing the top of what was a long-term consolidation zone in this uh, box that we had between these two purple lines, the 281 and 260 area. We did spend a lot of time within that and, you know, broke out, tested back in and broke out of it again. And it does look like we're about ready to test back inside of it again. We'll see if the center line of the channel tends to be support like it was last time. I did draw a, a red console, a red, um, you know, price rejection zone. We've been up in this area around 290, you know, 288 to 290 uh, area, and we have not found a way to break through it. We did have the, um, you know, pullback here, selling wick. Uh, we tested up in this area again. We pulled back out of it, tested up again, pulled out of it, tested again and pulled out of it. So this area around 288 to 290 to me looks like pretty strong resistance. And until we get above that with a first test above the 285 or 2850 in the SPX, you know, until we start working our way above that and have some stronger closes, we may continue to consolidate in here. Now, this overall looks, you know, potentially like a little bit of a, a bear pennant uh, type price action, right? So we've got, if I draw in some trend lines here. look at you know this looks like a little bit of a consolidation uh, you know bear type pennant you know we could break below it if we do break below it you know what would be the projected move from that uh, let's see if I just project symmetry from the swing high to swing low from that area get rid of these intermediate lines which we don't need uh, a measured move would be a down to about 274 275 range right so this swing from this high to this low projected from this bounce up high would take us all the way down there so if we break this downtrend line or this down for uh, this wave four pivot we might see ourselves down into that 275 range now I've got a prior price level of 272, which is uh, this prior pullback pivot low. So again, the, the S, the SPY looks weak. Um, everything with all the news that's going on points to more downside uh, looking into the SPY. Um, momentum indicators continue to be uh, downtrending on the monthly, right? So we're getting the curl over in the monthly MACD. The RSI monthly is headed down. Uh, the next RSI level I uh, projected using the ver reverse engineering RSI was 50. <clears throat> that gets us down to 281. Uh, sorry, uh, 280 uh, would be that level, the 280.44. If we get down to 50, um, you know, I just don't see anything that right now, unless we get some news coming out of the China tariffs or Brexit or something like that, that gives the market some upside momentum. Uh, to me, everything still looks to the downside. So anyway, I'm going to keep it, keep it there at uh, 15 minutes on the video. Um, I don't see anything else to really talk through. I my bias is bearish on everything. Um, you know, maybe we're going to go into a neutral week. 
uh, but everything right now looks like it's uh, still headed to the downside and I don't see any news yet that gives us hope for anything else. Hope that helps. I'll send the levels out to Paul and uh, you guys take care. Have a good Memorial Day weekend or a good weekend wherever you are in the world. Thanks. Bye.